Uh, hello everybody, and uh, welcome to Dr. McBadass Plays. Um, this is a, a very special uh, first let's play, um, in that I'm going to play one of my favorite games of all time, uh, Banjo-Kazooie. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of this at, the, at a time. Um, I'll probably get through, at the very least, Spiral Mountain in the first level. Um, we'll see if we can get through uh, Treasure Trove Cove as well. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna do do this a little bit at a time in an attempt to get back into using YouTube, and uh, I figured, you know, what a great way to start. Um, so let's get going. Um, I guess, suppose, you know, um, this would be a pretty decent time to, for a little backstory in the game. Um, obviously this came out for the N64, um, I believe the year was 1998. Um, I mean, it's developed by Rare, um, who, you know, back in the Nintendo heyday could, uh, do absolutely no wrong. Um, I mean, for its age, the game still looks great, um... This is the main antagonist of the game, Gruntilda. Um, she's kind of a witch bitch. Um, you're not going to see a lot of her in the game. You're mostly going to hear her. Um, definitely a very, you know, overlying presence through the majority of the game. Uh, definitely makes it, um, makes her presence known for you. Um, I assume you can read um, while I'm talking. I hope you can multitask. Um, she wants to be pretty, um, and she's clearly not the prettiest, and, uh, as it turns out, our, uh, main protagonist, Banjo, uh, his little sister is the prettiest. Um, so, she gonna get pissed, and, uh, she gonna, you know, do some regrettable things. With her anthropomorphic broom. That's the thing. Everything in this game has eyes. It's kind of fucking creepy. Um, but hey, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I mean, this is one of my favorite games. Um, I mean, I remember waiting, waiting on the sequel to come out back when I was, you know, in the year 2000 when I, you know, at first heard that they were coming out with a sequel. Um, little old me was, God, more than excited for, you know, the promise of another one of these amazing games because really that's what it is. Um, I mean, to be fair, I think as far as Nintendo 64 platformers, um, for me this game beats out Mario 64, and I know that's saying something. I know those are some big shoes to fill, but to me it's, it's that good. So, like, obviously the characters in this game are, you know, pants on head, retarded. Um, oh, what's that? Is that my brother on a fucking broomstick and bright green? <laughs> Let's go find out. She just sits there, gets herself kidnapped. You know, Banjo's just sleeping through this shit. You know, what a good big brother he is. Um, it's important. You know, as I recall... Um, the picture on the wall behind 2D is actually a, um, test level from the game. I don't believe it appears. I'm, no, I mean, I know it doesn't appear in this game because I've played this game enough times to know that that's not an actual level. Um, I believe it's back from when the game was still called Dream. Um, so that's, you know, a little tidbit of information. Um, one of the reasons I'm doing this game first is because I've just played it enough times where, you know, I, I kind of know what's going on for the most part. I can provide some interesting background and, you know, where I can. So, basically what I'm going to do here is I'm um, going to completely skip the tutorial on how to do moves because I know how to do them all. I'm not going to waste your time and I'm not going to waste my time. Um, but just because I'm skipping the tutorial does not mean I'm just jumping up straight into Spiral Mountain because uh, there are some goodies to be found here. I 
and obviously, you know, like, it, it provides a pretty cool dynamic. Banjo is the, the, you know, the lovable, you know, big oaf of a bear, and Kazooie's his, you know, wisecracking, edgy partner, you know, sitcom style shit. It's pretty cool. I mean, you know, for, for a big, goofy cartoon game, it's, it's pretty good. So, basically, I just told Bottles, um, screw you, I already know the moves. Um, so, we've got, you know, basic jumping, rolling, rat a tat attack, um, the double jump, or the crouch jump, rather. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much it for now. As the game progresses, obviously, we learn a whole bunch of cooler moves, some cool moves. Um, so, basically, what I'm doing here is... Um, I'm going to collect all six honeycomb pieces in the area because uh, that grants you an extra life bar. Um, honeycomb pieces look like this. In the main area there are six, and then in every subsequent level of the game there are two. Kick some onions asses. Um, God, I forget early in the game you don't have the talent trot, so like it's that's like my default. So if you see me crouching for no reason, it's because I assume I can get around a little bit faster with the trot, and I know I can't yet. Um, but, you know, once we do Mumbo's Mount in the first level in the game, that's, you know, we'll get that going. So, obviously, we can also have the, you know, basic double jump, and I'm just going to do that. There's number two. Also, there's an extra life. Um, you can have up to nine in this game. At once, um, I don't remember ever getting a game over in this game. Except for maybe at Grunty's Furnace Fun, the last part of the game. Um, okay, I thought that's where it was. Oh, the honey comes over here. Um, the one thing I liked about this game over the sequel was that the enemies never respawned. Um, I remember back when I was little, I would get like this really weird anxiety over the respawning enemies. I'm really not sure why. Um, it just kind of bugged me. You know, it feels like it wasn't permanent, so, you know. Obviously, swim underwater. I got four out of six. Obviously, there's that bubble bar there. Um, that will, you know, be a, only a problem in one or two areas of the game. Um, the one I'm, the one I have in mind is, of course, the third level Clanker's Cavern, which, when I was little, always hated it. God, um, that game, God, gave me so much anxiety. Um, because, like, I just hate underwater parts. I mean, you can't, you can't grow up playing, you know, video games without despising underwater levels for one reason or another. And for me, it was because of Clanker's Cavern in this game. Um, because I could, I just always dreaded going down there and, you know, trying to make him rise. And obviously, I'm having a really hard time killing this cabbage. So there we go. Um, we got all six. And, uh... There we go. Now we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six bars of health. So I can take six hits before I die, or I can find those uh, beautiful regular honeycomb pieces to, uh, you know, get some health back. So I've pretty much done all there is to do in Spiral Mountain, other than learn moves if you didn't do that at first. Um, so we're going to head up into Gruntilda's Lair. I mean, just take a moment to appreciate this music. I mean... Grant Kirkhope, the you know the lead the lead music maker of this game, oh, God, he did a phenomenal job. In fact, um, maybe I'll provide a link when I post this video. He actually just recently released a six-hour-long album on Bandcamp, which is literally every single soundbite from this game, including every every music from every level, every sound effect from every level, everything. It's amazing. Like six hours, 150 tracks. It's really really cool. And uh, for anybody who's a fan of the game. Highly recommend you check it out. So, uh, into Gruntilda's Lair we go. And there's our cutscene. Now, I, I find this funny because this game has a couple hours of content. Like, you're going to be playing this game for a little while. I just like how so early in the game they, they're they in this spot. Like, this is, this is all she has to do. All her assistant Klungo has to do is flip the switch and it's done. They're switched. It's, you know, it would be game over. But instead, it takes literally like six or seven hours for him to flip the switch he just waits for us like obviously it's you know it's a video game so there's room for error and it's you know it was an earlier time so you know these these giant holes in the you know the game story weren't as cared about but you know just it's funny to think about 
So here we go, and here's her rhyming. She will do this through the entirety of the game, and it's, um... It's, you either really like it or it gets really obnoxious. I mean, I think it's cute. Um, so, I mean, for anybody, I'm gonna get the first Jiggy of the game, Jiggy Jigsaw Puzzle. Um, these are, you know, Jiggies to Banjo-Kazooie is, uh, stars to Mario. Collect enough, you get to move on to the next level. There's ten in every level, um, and there's ten in the overworld. Um, I got one, and then for every other level of the game, there is a Gruntilda switch that activates an extra Jiggy somewhere in the lair. So, um, every level has its own, uh, Jigsaw puzzle. Um, the gaps are how many, you know, puzzle pieces you need to complete it. Obviously, the first level, you'll need the one. Um, you know, as you get later in the game, there are more. It's funny because I will, as I play through this game, I'm going to complete every level in its entirety, one at a time. Um, the nice thing about this game is that you can beat the level from as soon as you walk into it. Um, so that's really cool. There's Mumbo's Mountain open for business. Um, but as you we get into the game, you're going to find that, like, because I'm doing, you know, every... I'm completing every level in its entirety, I'm going to have a lot more jigsaw pieces than I actually need to do certain puzzles. So, like, once I beat this level, I can actually technically com get into the next two levels. Um, Treasure Trove, Cove, and Clanker's Cavern, but, you know, obviously I'm going to go one at a time for the sake of a Let's Play. So I'm going to kill some of these goblin dudes um, for no reason other than just to show you that, you know, they're enemies and they can be killed. Most enemies in the game can be killed with one hit. Um, usually a good roll will do the trick. Uh, it's a mumbo token um, that I just picked up. The mumbo tokens, you collect them and then, you know, in certain levels. Um, mumbo Jumbo, our uh, shaman at large, can turn us into certain creatures. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. I'm um, going to do a little jump up here, get a Jinjo. Uh, five in every level, collecting all five gets you a Jiggy. Pretty simple. Um, usually they're not hidden too difficultly, um, but you know, they, some of them make you think. It's you know, it, it's it's a collectathon game. So, I mean, there's these are the musical notes. Um, musical notes help you progress through the game. They let you open musical notes doors that will um, hinder your progress at certain points. Um, if you collect it, you know, um, there are 100 in every level, I usually try to get them all. Now, what I believe this game does, which they changed in the, um, the Xbox Live version they released, is that if you leave the level without collecting all 100 notes, you they actually all respawn, which is interesting. Um, and kind of a pain in the ass if you don't, if you're not aware of it. Um, I could be wrong. I, I usually beat the level in its entirety, so I can't. I'm not really going to confirm it. Um, but uh, the first things first. I know I'm skipping a lot of things, but uh, right now I'm, I'm getting what is um, arguably the most crucial move in the game um, to pick up, which is the talent drop. Not only does it make you move faster, but allows you to climb up steep slopes that uh, Banjo could not otherwise do himself. So, very, very, very crucial move. Um, and there we go. Now I'm just going to trot around and do some cool things. So, got my first Jiggy of the level. There's ten in each, like I said. Like I said, creepy eyeballs. When you're ready to leave this world, return to the start area and stand on the exit pad. Well, like I said, we're not doing that until we collect everything. Uh, these are eggs. In a couple minutes, I'll be getting a move that lets me shoot them out of my front and my back, if you catch my drift. Gonna collect some notes here. I know there's a mumbo token behind there. Jinjo. Mumbo token. I believe I need five for good old mumbo jumbo. Um, I'm just gonna go down here and collect all the notes. Um, now there's a Jinjo down here. There's sh I don't remember if there's a Jiggy or not. Um, the thing about this level is it's very small and it doesn't take very long to beat. Um, but I think for the sake of, you know, doing this video, I think I might just, because I already did Spiral Mountain as well, I think, um, we will do Mumbo's Mountain and call it a night. And uh, we'll either I'll probably do Treasure Trove Cove tomorrow. 
the, the camera is a little finicky in this game. I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'm actually playing on a PS3 controller, so definitely have more um, fluid range of motion as opposed to, you know, playing on an N64 controller with the, the C-pad. Um, this is a bull. Uh, you can't kill the bull, so I'm not going to try. Um, but he also can't cross this bridge, so we're good. Um, going to get Jinjo over here. There's a nice little alcove up there. Al alcove? Alcove? Whatever the word is. That there's a honey one of the two honeycomb pieces in this level. Um, the other one, actually, um, if you don't know where to look, it's actually really tricky to find. Um, this game, if you've never played it before, um, definitely rewards you for, you know, paying attention and to your to your surroundings as a general whole. Um, obviously, like, how would, you know, otherwise, why, how would you know that these, you know, musical notes were down here? Um, obviously, I'm totally taking advantage of my, you know, oxygen bar. I could have been on a lot quicker, but screw it. Um, we're going to go talk to uh, Kanga the monkey and uh, get a couple more jiggies, including the, and also the um, egg bash ability. Um, oh. I mean, I guess I might as well explain this. I'm not going to need it anytime soon. That's a uh, honeycomb hive. Um, kill it, or it's a beehive. You kill it, get honeycombs. There's something oddly satisfying about destroying a sentient honeycomb hive. So this is Kanga. Um, he's pretty pissed. He's got this tree going on. Um, he's throwing the shit at me, and uh, the object is essentially just to make him hit these with these orange pads with his oranges. Um, Strangely enough, um, this is not the uh, first monkey that uh, Rare has uh, developed. Uh, for anybody that knows, um, Rare has also developed many of the uh, Donkey Kong Country games as well as Donkey Kong 64. Um, and I'm really bad at this because, like, the lag that he throws the oranges, like, I always get it messed up. But there we go. Um, got all three, get a jiggy, and we're not done yet. You actually get three jiggies from Kanga. Um, so we're gonna climb up here, get that, get that orange. Um, we're gonna talk to this little monkey dude over here, throw him the orange. He's gonna raise his platform, give us another jiggy. Chimby like Congo orange. Chimby help fat Baron bird. So um, you're gonna find that a lot of the characters that you meet in this game are really fucking rude. Um, but you know they help you out when you need to. So why are you gonna complain? Oh, there's a mumbo token somewhere over here, I think. Could be wrong. I'm pro I might be wrong. Probably wrong. It's like weird habit, because like I don't, I don't, I almost remember everything in this game, but not, not perfectly. It's like semi-photographic, so you know he raises this up. Oh, so I can flippy dippy do up here. Um, there's another bottles molehill. Um, I'm gonna talk to him and get the egg shooting ability. I just realized I should have done this differently um, because I don't have the um, Beak Buster build drill. Beak, beak, beak Buster? I think it's called the Beak Buster, which is the basically ground pound of the game um, to get the Gruntilda switch over there, or the Witch switch, I believe it's called. Um, but uh, right now I'm just going to do Congo and get the Jiggy and we'll, we'll call it. Your energy is a little low. Great. Awesome. Thanks for telling me. So, uh, yeah, every time, if you ever have low energy, if you're, if you're coming to see bottles, he'll refill it. Um, so basically the object is I'm just gonna, you know, hit Mr. Monkey here a couple times with some eggs to piss him off. And then he relinquishes a jiggy as well, um, which is interesting because I'm not sure why he would. Um, but he's going to because he's a cool guy. I think you have to wait for him to beat his chest. Like, it's kind of weird. Um, like, hello, dude? Oh, that's, I forgot. I forgot I actually had to um, trigger him talking before I could do anything, which is kind of weird, but that's how it works. So I'm going to have to be patient for a second because he's kind of a dick about this. Like, hello, Mr. Monkey? Come on, dude. There we go. Yar, egg hurt conga. No shit. 
That's why I'm doing it. There we go. He's going to throw another orange, and I'm going to dodge it like a champ. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't dodge that one too well, did I? There we go. So he gets pissed off, and um, he's going to give me a jiggy. And what's funny is he sits there defeated, um, yet he, I believe he still throws shit at you after you pick up the jiggy. He's like, yeah, you beat me, but uh, doesn't mean I'm not still going to try to throw shit at you. Yep. What did I say? Um, so we got 4 out of 10 for the level, um, a couple more things we have to do, obviously, we're not even halfway there, but, like, you'd be surprised, like, how crammed together everything is in this level. Um, we'll go into here now, just to say we did, um, because you actually have to get this mumbo token as Banjo and Kazooie, um... This, you know, I'll give you a hint. Um, this place obviously alludes to, uh, you know, the type of creature Mumbo's going to transform you into. Uh, I'm going to kill this goblin dude. So here, this is what I was talking about. The why it hurts doesn't hurt to pay attention to your surroundings. Um, there is a honeycomb right there. And how would you know that if you did not look? Um, and if you... The thing is, the thing about that totem is you actually have to um, pound it low. Um, or shoot eggs into it to make it go low, and if you make it too low, you actually can't get it until the next time you re-enter the level, so that's why it's important to, you know, look around. So now we're going to get the uh, Beak Buster. Yeah, Beak Buster. Cool, I was right. The build drill is actually the evolution of this this move in uh, Tui, in which you can actually drill heavy rocks. Whoa, Banjo, there's nothing more I can teach you. So he'll tell you, obviously, when uh, you can't do anything more. Um, the next Jiggy I'm going to get, obviously, I know I'm sure you guys saw the one in the eye. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm going to just do all this. Actually, I don't really need those, so it's not important. Um, oopsies. Jinjo, so is that the last one? Okay, so now I'm going to get another Jiggy. There we go. Love that music. God, I love that music. <clears throat> and like, I hope I'm not boring you. Like, I, I'm, I'm doing this um, because I thought it'd be fun. I would love tips and suggestions from anybody who'd be willing to give them. See, like I said, there's three jiggies within five feet of each other. Actually, there's four once I knock this down. Um, it's a really small level, but it's a very good beginner level because it really helps you to learn the basics of the game in a fairly easy environment. So here we go, but boom and that's the two honeycombs of the level. Oh, I'm sorry, still just did the one, because I didn't get the one in the alcove. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get well, I mean I guess I might as well get this uh, jiggy here. What I tell you, four in a row in like a minute flat. <coughs> Excuse me, I coughed a little bit. I'm actually still a little sick, um, so if you hear my voice a little, you know, tattered and broken, that's that's why. Um, so here's a cool little trick. Oh, that that guy's raging hardcore. Holy crap. Um, so there's actually a thing right here somewhere. Right here, I believe. Yeah. Oh, oh, missed it. Crap, I was so close. You technically supposed to get it as the um, dude, the the termite that you turn into, but that's for losers. Um, no, I mean, I guess I can get it in a second. I came down here more importantly to get the witch switch, so I don't have to come back here once I'm done. What up, Conga? Nice to see you again. Screw you. You ain't gonna get shit from me. So flippy do up here again. A little jumping, a little jumping. Mumbo token. So now I have five. I can see Mumbo. I know there's a sixth one in his hut if I needed it. And there we go. See, I did this now because um, the thing about the termite you turn into is he has very good climbing abilities, which surpass the talent rod. So in order to get that jig, you actually need to be the termite. Um, 
for pretty much for every level that has a transformation, um, there is a the the outside jiggy usually is in regards to the transformation. Um, so just keep that in mind for your future reference. Um, how many jiggies am I at? I'm at eight, so I have. <coughs> what am I missing? What am I missing? That's an excellent question. Um, I got the Jinjos. I know I'm missing the one on top of there. Uh, oh, yeah, see? Duh. Look at that. Derp, derp, derp. I'm so good at this. So there's actually five, like, within a second of each other. Um, that take a little more than looking around to find. Like, that's the thing. This, this level, just you gotta look around for everything. Um, the next level is actually considerably bigger, all things considered. Um, as it also teaches you the amazing power of flight, which is one of the most fun things to do in this game, is fly around. Um, so... Let us... Let us go then, you and I. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just turn into the dude. Um, get the last Jiggy. Get the honeycomb, and get the hell out of Mumbo's Mountain. Save the best for last, ladies and gentlemen, meet Mumbo Jumbo, our shaman at large. Um, he helps you because basically Gruntilda, they actually, him and Gruntilda the witch actually used to date. Um, and uh, then she got pissed and uh, turned him into this weird pinky fleshy mumbo y thing. Um, so before I turn into the termite. Typically, there's goodies in every Mumbo's hut. Um, in this case, it's just eggs, but I'm coming, come up, coming up here to show you. Um, so here we go. Time for Mumbo to work his uh, Mumbo uh, magic. Um, actually, um, I'm gonna, you know, um, allude to the kings of let's plays at the time being being you know our the the game of grumps um back when john tron was still doing the um show he they actually had the composer of banjo kazooie grant kirkhope on and um they actually he actually talked about a lot of sounds in the game one of them being um mumbo himself when he says um umanaka um which is his thing he says every time he transforms it's actually a play on, um, you know, some, some British humor. I think it was like um, Uma Knackers or something, um, which is some balls or something. I don't I don't quite remember. Um, but this guy's trying to jack my shit. And I'm going to say no to that. So, see what I'm saying? Like, this is what uh, the termite requires. Like, this is some very steep climbing, which you would not be able to do unless you were Mr. Termite. I mean, this isn't very difficult. You just kind of got to pay attention to what's going on. Um, I believe there's a one-up around the corner. There is. So we're going to get up here, and I'm missing three notes. And I don't quite know where they are. They're probably on that mountain there. But right now, I'm going to get this thing. Shaboom. So I've almost collected everything in the level. Um, I guess it would be 100%ing the level um, if if we were doing that. Okay, there's the three. There are the three notes. I think I said jiggies earlier. Whoops. And there we go. Level 100% complete. Um, when you get 100 notes, you actually get a level up, uh, level for an extra life. Yeah, words. Um, so now we're gonna leave as the termite. Um, Grunty's magic stops you taking the notes off the world. <coughs> yeah, see, okay. <laughs> he wants my shorts. So there we go. And um, thus far, we have done everything there is to do in the game. Um, so now we're going to try to leave, and Mumbo's going to tell us that if we go too far, the magic wears off. <laughs> Which is exactly what we want because we want to move on with the game.
And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up here. I'm going to show you the note door. We're going to pass the note door, and that's where we will leave off until next time. See, this game gives you some leeway. I got all the notes, but like, if you really couldn't find all 100, you only need 50 for the first door. Like I said, like because I'm 100%ing the game pretty much as we go through, um, there's going to be a lot of like complete overkill with requirements. So, uh, and you get this cool little animation. And uh, we're going to head into the next area. That door was easy. You got past. Unfortunately, you're first and last. So, uh, just chilling here, and you know, let's screw up. See, exactly what I said. Uh, Treasure Trove Cove only needs two. Do, 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 do. And that's the next area of the game. Um, and I think from there, that's we will we will leave off. So um, until next time, everybody. This has been Dave McBadass signing out. See you next time.